Charlie, you have been avoiding me. Sorry, Lucas. No need to say sorry. Huh? I just need you to remind a few people that they owe me money. Please, uh, Lucas. I, I really don't want to do this anymore. Do what? Spray paint at people's home, lock their gates with bicycle chain, or even set their house on fire. Ken, no problem. All you have to do is pay me the money that you owe. It's $4,000, right? Do you have the money? No? Then you better do what I ask you to do. Or else, it will be your home that's going to be on fire! Investigation officer Alvin Lee from Unlicensed Mine Landing Strike Force. Charlie Heng, you're under arrest for activity relating to unlicensed mine landing. Cuff him. Eyes on you for a while. So why not just tell us who you're working for? Keeping quiet in this situation won't help you. I can see that you're in over your head. I didn't want to be a runner or even hurt somebody. But I got no choice. He threatened to set my house on fire. Who? I only know him by the name of Lucas. So what did Lucas tell you to do? Lucas would text me instructions. Go to so-and-so place, meet so-and-so person and collect money from him. How much money? Between $2,000 to $8,000. I would check first to make sure the amount was correct. Then Lucas would text me again to go somewhere else hand the money to some other person. Who are these people? I don't know. Do you have their contact details? No. Lucas gave instruction and I just follow. Do you still have Lucas's number? Yes. Looks like Charlie Heng is just the tip of the iceberg. I suspect this syndicate spans several years. But he doesn't know the names of the people he met. Well, based on experience, we know that Lucas isn't Along's real name. 
And as in previous cases, Lucas's number was registered to a foreign national who has since left the country. So, what now? Charlie gave description of the men that he met and the cars that they drove. Any chance he got the license plates? No, but he knows when and where he met them. That means we can use the pole cam footage for leads. We've traced the license plate numbers of the vehicles belonging to the two suspects who Charlie met. Suspect 1 is Adrian Peter. He has no prior convictions and is currently working as a private hire driver. Suspect 2, Yap Beng Chai. He has several prior convictions related to theft. He's a private hire driver. So you have eyes on their registered addresses? Yes, they are home right now. Good, let's go. I'm I.O. Penny Lim from the Unlicensed Money Lending Strike Force. I'm Senior Investigation Officer Alvin Lee from Unlicensed Money Lending Strike Force. Are you Yang Chai? Yes. Are you Adrian Peter? Please step up. Can you step forward, sir? You're under arrest. For, for activities related, related to Unlicensed, to unlicensed money, lending. money Lending. Cuff him. Cuff him. Any updates? We found 19 prepaid SIM cards at Adrian's home. When we questioned him, he confessed and admitted that he worked for Lucas. Adrian would collect SIM cards and ATM cards for Lucas. Then, he would use different SIM cards to contact other runners. Sometimes, he would use the ATM cards to deposit or withdraw money. Bing Chai also confessed. To working for Lucas? Yes, he consolidate all the money collected from several runners. Hand over to someone higher up in the syndicate, a chief runner. Let me guess, Beng Chai doesn't know the name of this chief runner. But lucky for us, Lucas has sent Beng Chai a picture of the chief runner's van for identification, and it's still in his phone gallery. From this, it was easy enough to trace Chuck Nixon. He's a delivery driver. No prior convictions. Hi, I'm Senior Investigation Officer Elvin Lee from Unlicensed Mine Landing Strike Force. Are you Chang Yisheng? Yes. You're under arrest for activities relating to unlicensed mine landing. Cut it. Okay, got it. Okay, I'm coming over. A runner named Jonathan Long just surrendered. He replied to a message that offered cheap loans and before he knew it, he was in debt to an along known as Lucas. So it could be the same syndicate? Where's Alvin? Sir, I only do what Lucas tells me. I don't know if he's the leader or not. What does he tell you do? Collect money, deposit an ATM, or pass to Tampanese. Tampanese? Yeah, he's another runner. But I don't know his name. I only call him Tampanese because that's where we meet. You have to believe me. I needed money, so I replied to a text message that offered cheap loans. But I ended up owing Lucas more and more. And he forced me to be a runner. Now, I don't trust anybody. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I'm always afraid. He did the right thing coming to us. What do you do as a runner for Lucas? I picked up and handed over money. To who? To a guy in Geelang and another guy in Tampanese. Now we know that Chang Yisheng is a chief runner for another guy in Tampanese. Alvin, how was the interview eviction? He gave a lead. He always met out with another runner at the exact same spot, Tampaneseville. Block 30. Jonathan, the runner who just surrendered, has been meeting someone there too. And another runner at Geelang. Two more new names in the syndicate? Yep. Now we know the address for the one at Tampanese. What about the other one at Geelang? I got this from Jonathan. The vehicle which the Geelang runner uses.
Yes, the lorry has been rented out by Mr. Leong Wei Lun. Do you have his particulars? Could you send them to me? Sure, I'll do it right now. Do you want to have the current location of the lorry? Yes. The GPS says that it is at Lorong 25 Geylang right now. Okay, thank you. Let's go. Elvin, I have a visual of the runner at Tampines. This is the pole cam footage from Block 30, Tampines Fail. On the left is Jonathan passing an envelope to the Tampines runner. On the right is Ikshin passing an envelope to the Tampines runner. See the lift stops at 16th floor? Get eyes on the 16th floor of this block now. The moment the suspect spotted, arrest him. Yes, Penny. Okay, I'm on my way. We will have to stick it out and wait for Weilun to return. Penny, get back up. We have to cover all the escape routes. Got it. Investigation officer of Indy, my licensed money lending strike force. I'm Ayo Dinesh from Unlicensed Money Lending Strike Force. You're under arrest for activities involving unlicensed money lending. Kafim. Any updates on our West Coast runner that Weilun gave up? Since Weilun gave us the location, dates and times that they met and that he drives a red car, we managed to get the pole cam footage of his license plate number. Meet Chan Chi Kin. He's a property agent and he has several prior convictions for harassment. How do you know, Lucas? During the two years of COVID restrictions, I have difficulties closing transactions as a property agent. So I borrowed from Lucas. How much? Only 1100 But the interest is $600 every month. And when I couldn't make the payment for them... You live with your mother, right? I'm sure you don't want anybody going to your home and disturb an old lady like her, right? You leave my mother alone. This is up to you. Please, can you give me another chance? Just for this month? Tell you what, you can pay me back by helping me do something. Lucas will text me an address, usually an industrial building. And specify which floor to go to. and which specific cubicle in the mail toilet to leave the money. After dropping off the money, I will text Lucas. Does Chicken know who picks up the money after he leaves it behind? No, he never waited around to find out. So the trial ends here? Not exactly. You remember the 41,000 that we found in Chicken's flat? He's supposed to do a date drop tonight at 9pm. I suggest we do a stakeout at the date drop spot to see who shows up. Can 
I see this? Dinesh, what's the situation? No movement. There's no sign of anyone or anything suspicious. I don't think the pickup is happening today. Let's wrap this up. Get back to office. Roger. Thank you. <laughs> I just can't believe no one showed up to take the 41,000. <sighs> Lucas must have been alerted and decided to call the pickup off. Chin up, guys. For now, we managed to cripple this syndicate and disrupt its operations. In the case you've just seen, officers conducted detailed investigations for almost one year to systematically identify perpetrators at different echelons within an unlicensed money lending syndicate. Their perseverance led to the arrest of 21 suspects. Of these, 10 were convicted of charges related to unlicensed money lending. The remaining suspects were administered warnings. More than $61,000, as well as multiple ATM cards and SIM cards, were also seized from the syndicate. Thanks to the determination of officers from the unlicensed money lending strike force, the syndicate was crippled and its operations disrupted. Unlicensed moneylenders use unregulated harassment methods to collect on debts and may even resort to violence. The police will continue to take tough enforcement action against those involved in unlicensed money lending. If you suspect or know someone who could be involved in unlicensed money lending activities, call the police at 999 or the XR Long hotline at 1 800 924 5664. More and more unlicensed moneylenders are sending loan advertisements via text messages or online platforms. If you receive such advertisements, please don't respond and report them as spam. Be careful because messages about loans may also be scams as well. In 2022, about 9.3 million was lost to loan scams. We're here today to see if members of the public can tell if these are legit or not. Hi, so today I'm going to show you two screenshots and sure. ask you if you think these are legit or not. Mm. Wow, it looks really legit eh. This one looks quite legit eh. Uh, yes, I think it is. Oh, but loan up to 300,000. Oh, okay, okay. The, okay, I think it's fake. I think it's a scam. Well, I can't really tell, except for the part it says no maximum loan limit. Yeah, it seems too good to be true. Then there's also the uh, small fee up front. I think like money lenders, they don't take money before they give out loan. You're absolutely correct. They are not allowed to take a small fee before they disperse your loan to you. And I can receive cash within 24 hours also seem not legitimate where it's as if anybody can just give me, lend me money anytime. And you're right, they need to see you in person to assess your financial situation before they can decide how much money to loan you. I won't borrow from them anyway. It's not a bank, so I'm not sure how trustworthy they'll be. If I all this, I will ignore it. Lor. For the next screenshot, do you think this is legit or not? Uh, no, I received something like this before. Nah, it's just a scam. Yeah, this one is a scam. Like, who will just message you out of nowhere? Like, I don't know, it doesn't look real. Lah. Licensed money lenders won't send an SMS like that, right? You're absolutely right. Licensed money lenders are not supposed to send people text messages asking if they like to take loans or not. So this is how you can be sure that this is absolutely a scam. Who's Elvin? <laughs> Who's Elvin? I know, I have that question as well. With so many scams out there, the best defence against scams is to be aware, watchful and discerning. How can you do that? You can act against scams. ACT stands for Act, Check and Tell. These are three simple but important steps that everyone can use to protect against scams. First, add security features to your mobile devices. One simple way to add is to download the Scam Shield app. Scam Shield helps filter scam calls and SMSs. Second, check for signs that something might be a scam. When you get a phone call or message asking for your personal information, banking credentials or to transfer money, check with those organisations directly to verify. Finally, tell your family, friends or the authorities about scam encounters. If you suspect you have fallen prey to a scam, tell your bank and police immediately. If you need advice, you can also call the National Crime Prevention Council's Anti-Scam Helpline or go to its website. We've come to the end of the premiere episode of Crime Watch for 2023. Join us for another exciting season of cases and investigations. I'm DSP Azfa Khan. Until next time, 
do your part to prevent, deter and detect crimes.